Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There's a math trick that's blowing up the internet. I just want to take a minute to appreciate media coverage of anything mathematical because the headlines they write are so amazing. Who could resist these articles? This article says, sick of asking your smart friends to help with this common problem? Now you won't have to, thanks to one man's maths sorcery. Another article, people stunned over easy percentage hack they wish they knew in school. This TikTok math secret has 18 million views and counting. Do you know it? So what is this incredible trick? Let's explain it through a simple example. Calculate 18% of 50. Do you know the answer? Most of us wouldn't be able to figure this out in our heads, even if we had a few seconds. But with this incredible trick, you'll be able to figure it out nearly instantly. The magical trick is that percentages are reversible. So instead of taking 18% of 50, we can reverse the two numbers. We are instead going to take 50% of 18. Now what's 50% of 18? 50% is equal to 1 half, and 1 half of 18 is equal to 9. So the original question, what is 18% of 50, will have the same answer. So 18% of 50 is equal to 9. And that's the remarkable calculation trick. Let's do another example. What is 4% of 75? This is again not an easy calculation. So instead, let's use the trick. We will reverse the numbers. Instead of doing 4% of 75, we are going to take 75% of 4. 75% is equal to 3 over 4, and 3 fourths of 4 is exactly equal to 3. Therefore, 4% of 75 is also equal to 3. Now let's do another example. What is 32% of 25? This will be very hard to do, so we will go ahead and reverse the numbers. Instead of doing 32% of 25, let's do 25% of 32. 25% is equal to 1 over 4. 1 fourth of 32 is exactly equal to 8. Therefore, 32% of 25 is equal to 8. Now let's do one more example. What is 15% of 20? Let's go ahead and reverse the numbers. We will instead take 20% of 15. Now 20% is exactly equal to 1 over 5. 1 fifth of 15 is equal to 3. So 15% of 20 is equal to 3. Now I see a lot of videos cover this topic, but very few of them get into the general mathematical explanation of it. So in general, we can say that x percent of y is exactly equal to y percent of x. But why do we know that this is true? Let's go ahead and justify this trick. So x percent of y, we can convert that into a mathematical expression. So x percent will be equal to x over 100, and of y will be multiplied by y. So we want the fraction x over 100 multiplied by y. From here, we will use the commutative property of multiplication. The order in which the two numbers are multiplied does not matter. So x multiplied by y is the same thing as y multiplied by x. So let's exchange the x and the y. So we will now have y over 100 multiplied by x. But what is y over 100? That is exactly equal to y percent. We are multiplying this by x, so this becomes y percent of x. So we'll just clean things up now, and we have shown precisely that x percent of y is equal to y percent of x. So this is truly a remarkable trick, and it can simplify a lot of percentage calculations. But it may not be the perfect trick to solve every single thing. If you try and teach some students this trick, Someone will certainly say, 
well, what would happen if you tried to calculate 23% of 52? I use this trick and I reverse the percentages. So then 23% of 52, when I reverse them, it became 52% of 23. And look, there's no easy way to calculate this. Your trick doesn't work. It's not actually that useful. Well, you could use that perspective, but let's actually see how this trick would help in this situation. We're going to have to use a little bit of extra thinking, but let's go ahead and go through it. So 52% can be broken down. It is equal to 50% plus 2%. What can we do from there? 2% is exactly equal to double 1%. Now, it is pretty easy to calculate 50% and 1%. So let's calculate 50% of 23. This will be half of 23, which is equal to 11.5. Now, what's 1% of 23? We move the decimal point over by two spots. This is equal to 0.23. If we then want to double that, this will be equal to 0.46. So now we're pretty ready to solve this question. 52% will be equal to 11.5 plus 0.46. So we add these together and we get this is equal to 11.96. So 52% of 23 is equal to 11.96, and therefore 23% of 52 is also equal to 11.96. This may seem complicated, but once you get used to practicing these tricks, you'll be able to figure out percentages in your head pretty easily. Now I want to conclude the video with a little bit of mathematical history to give perspective. Surely when a student sees a problem like 25% of 75, it just seems boring. This is going to be a rote calculation. You're going to get out some pencil and paper. You're going to have to scribble some numbers. And OK, great, we found an answer that we could have figured out with the calculator. Wow, what a big deal. Well, I think it's important to realize this sort of complaint is a modern luxury. It's important to remember that Europe was fumbling around with Roman numerals until about the 1500s the problem would have been written as one quarter of LXXV. There was no way to calculate this in the same algorithms we just used. You would actually have to use an abacus. So you would translate the numbers into positions on an abacus. You would then move these counters around. Then there's no easy way to audit what you did. No one can actually check every step that you did. And then you would take the answer and you would have to transcribe it back into a number. So it was truly a remarkable thing that we could just take numbers, go and directly do the calculations that anybody could verify, and then we would directly get an answer. There would be no way that you would have to translate it back. But this wasn't something that everyone just adopted right away. It was actually a mathematical feud between these two systems. Are we going to go with the new system of calculation or are we going to stick with the system of the abacus? And actually for hundreds of years, people said the abacus was better. So it's actually something we should really appreciate that we have a number system which allows us to do calculations. And it's so wonderful that we can even do the calculations in our head. So the next time you calculate a tip at a restaurant or you're calculating sales tax, just remember, you're using one of the most important inventions that has ever happened in mathematical history. And it's truly remarkable that we learn these things even as grade school kids, and we should be appreciative of this fact. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.